Zadrizes bus darīs, kas tev. An open casting call has just went out for what could potentially be the Dunkin' Egg series we've all been waiting for. Now real quick, before I jump into the content of this video, I've actually done a Dunkin' Egg video recently, about two weeks ago. Right here, please click this link or check down below in the description to go watch that if you already haven't done so. So with this first casting call coming out now and we're ending uh, the year 2023, I expect there will be some more over the next couple of months. But let's jump right into it. Uh, please slap a like on this video if you enjoy my content here on YouTube, that really helps me out. Um, and then also subscribe to my channel that's the best thing you could ever do for me or anybody you're a fan of here on youtube uh thank you ahead of time for watching and along that as a three is costar okay so i'm going to read the casting notice for the two actors they want to play uh duncan sir duncan the tall and uh, egg king egg the unlikely eventually although i don't know if the series will take it that far right? but there are a couple things about three or four things I want to mention first before I get into that. The first one is that they're going to start filming by March 2024. That's really, really exciting because, like, you know how I just said I wasn't going to read the casting call yet? Well, in the casting call, it says specifically that uh, filming will take place in 2024, and these are paid roles, yes, but also that the character who's going, the actor who's going to play Egg will need to be... Uh, nine years old at least nine years old by march of 2024 so to me i feel like they're going to be starting filming either in march or april right because that's going to be the character the actor's age by the time they you know he assumes the role and becomes uh, this character that everybody loves all right so real quick let me backtrack a bit if you're unaware and this is one of your first times seeing or hearing me talk about Duncan Egg. Duncan Egg is actually called The Night of the Seven Kingdoms, right? That's like this series of novella. It is yet to be completed, but ultimately we know what happens in the end via World of Ice and Fire in several of the characters' POVs in the main and Song of Ice and Fire book series. Like, specifically, 90 years before the events that take place on Game of Thrones and also in the main a Song of Ice and Fire series books, right? So in... The first one, The Hedge Knight, which is actually going to be what this show is based on. So, like, HBO greenlit the first season. George R. R. Martin told us in Not A Blog that it was going to consist of at least six episodes. So, maybe six or seven episodes when it does come out. But we know for a fact we're going to get an entire arc for the first novella in the series called The Hedge Knight. Right? So, in this one, we're introduced into the main titular characters. One of them being Sir Dunk the Lunk, who is this massively tall knight. Well, he becomes a knight when the story starts. It's kind of tricky. So he's the squire to Sir Arlen of Pennytree, and he dies. Then the book starts with Dunk burying him and taking on the mantle of a hedge knight, which is someone who basically roams around the Seven Kingdoms and takes on service from different lords and people who need help, right? But they're paid gold. Whereas traditionally in Westeros, if you are a vassal of a major house, you're sworn to that house and you are in service with them, but you just stay with them. So you're stationary, right? So for instance, in River Run, there are several houses that are sworn to House Tully, most notably House Frey. There have been several instances in the Song of Ice and Fire history where House Frey had to pay fealty and do deeds in service of House Tully, right? But it's only that house. A hedge knight is somebody who can go wherever they want to. Uh, and sort of work out contracts, right? So that's what this dude Dunk does. And that's why what I just described, that's one of the reasons why these books are so interesting is because you get to see all of the Seven Kingdoms through the perspective of a small folk. But let's get way back on track here. So as I mentioned before, in the casting call, they need the actor who's going to be playing Egg, who I didn't really describe his character, but he is this initially stable boy in disguise. And when he first meets Dunk, Dunk kind of tells him to take care of his horse and do this and do that. And then eventually, through the course of the book, towards the very end, we find out that Egg is actually Prince Aegon of House Targaryen, right? And then uh, this massive, without saying too many spoilers, like I said, I did a video on uh, Dunkin' Egg series a couple of weeks ago, and then I actually did a live stream on it. You can check the link down below in the description or just go uh, check my YouTube playlist. So at the end of the first book, The Hedge Knight, the two characters, Dunk and Egg, Dunk the Hedge Knight and Prince Egg, Prince Aegon of House Targaryen, end up setting off to see the world. Dunk wants to go find this woman that he kind of falls in love with named Tantal Too Tall down in Dorne, and that's kind of where the story ends. Basically, Dunk talks to Prince Makar, who's Egg's father, and Prince Makar thinks that it's a good idea for Aegon to go and travel the world and see what it's like uh, with Dunk because one of his other 
sons, Prince Ari and Bright Flame, turns out to be a twat. So Prince Makar and Dunk agree that they don't want Egg to be a twat. So that's basically how the book ends. And then the next couple of books that we get in the series recant some of their adventures. But like I said, the, the series itself is unfinished. So uh, hopefully George will put that out if HBO continues to greenlight more seasons. So one of the th some facts that we know about the show is that George told us in the Not A Blog post that the person who wrote the pilot which got the show greenlit, was a student named Ira Parker. And Ira Parker worked on House of the Dragon. He wrote episode 4, which is one of my favorite episodes of the season. Uh, also, George told us it'll be six episodes. The working title is, this one's a mouthful, but it's A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, The Hedge Knight. Uh, and if I had to guess, I would say that since the show is starting filming so early and there's such few episodes, I don't think it'll happen. But we could even get like a February release of 2025 or maybe, if it's possible, right, sometime in 2024. I just highly doubt it. Um, so the casting call was actually put on Twitter. Speaking of which, please go follow me with Sir underscore Hunt. But the account that put it out is Lucy Bevan Casting. This person has casted uh, movies like Barbie, The Batman, and Belfast. I uh, haven't seen Barbie. Batman was mediocre. Belfast was, I don't even know what that is. I know it's a place in Ireland. <laughs> uh, anyway. They mentioned that he's currently looking for two leading roles in an upcoming HBO television series. Uh, the first role is a boy aged 9 to 10. Physically, this boy will need to be small. The character is wise beyond their years, confident, and witty. He has a neutral English accent and is white with blue green eyes and pale skin. Must be under 4 feet 6 tall and at least 9 years old by March 2024. And that's actually really dope because he's nine years old uh, when the first Dunkin' Egg book starts. Like, uh, he was born in 200 AC and the turning of Nashville was in 209 AC. So he's like nine or almost 10 years old uh, when the first novella takes place. That's really interesting. So then the we have a counterpart casting call for that, and that's for Dunk, right? It's called, uh, they're looking for an actor who's aged 18 to 25. So a bit more leeway in the age there uh, but the soldier will need to be very tall and physically strong he's a humble disposition and is perceptive and thoughtful any ethnicity must be six foot four uh, so the most important part to me right because you can get an actor that could pull off this role dunk is a really likable character and the fact that george wrote his pov is like singular through all so far at least through all of the Dunkin' Egg novels he's pretty well rounded he's almost as flushed out right at least for season one two and three the books that we have so far he's as flushed out Dunk the character as someone like maybe dare I say Jon Snow or Daenerys or Tyrion right not quite Tyrion Tyrion is the most POV chapters right but Dunk it should be pretty easy for an actor to call off of stuff to build who this character is mentally in their head, right? But in my opinion, the most important thing is that they are at least like the, like the call says, must be at least six foot four, right? Because not a lot of people are that tall. Um, so Dunk will have to, he's like six foot four, six foot four barefoot, but then in armor, you're even more physically imposing. Like that's the most thing. You gotta be, you gotta be like, Dunk the lunk. You gotta look like you could whoop most people's booties, right? So that's the most important thing for me, right? But then the other thing, they said this is kind of giving an insight into who they want this character to be on screen. Obviously, from the book counterpart, this is a very good description of him. Short and to the point. is a humble disposition and is perceptive and thoughtful. So what, in my opinion, right? Just explaining that last part. That's really important. Dunk is... Uh, perceptive and thoughtful so when you combine those words you think smart right but then I just mentioned oh he's got a he's called dunk the I didn't explain why he's called dunk the lunk but I mentioned dunk the lunk dunk thinks he's stupid and I feel like I've heard it a lot that if you think you're stupid you may be a little bit more intelligent than you're giving yourself credit for because you realize the fact that there's a bunch of knowledge that you don't personally contain there's a lot of things that you need to learn right that's dunk's cornerstone is his character he always calls himself stupid. He's always really hard on himself. So when he does actually learn stuff and he does do the right thing, he may not realize how good he is at doing it, right? So, uh, like, he's perceptive in the sense that he does dumb things sometimes and immediately realizes it. Uh, and thoughtful because, well, he does a lot of thinking in his head. During When you're reading his POVs, it's really interesting because Dunk is one of the few characters that comes from truly nothing. Right? In the tone of uh, 
Night of the Seven Kingdoms when you compare it to the traditional Song of Ice and Fire books like A Game of Thrones, A Clash of Kings, A Storm of Sword, A Feast for Crows, and A Dance of Dragons, most if not all of those POVs are people that have a way better position to start off with life, that started out in life. Not, not all of them, but the POV specifically, like my favorite ones anyway, Arya, Jon Snow, Bran, uh, Aside from Daenerys, but she still kind of grew up with privilege because she grew up in palaces and mansions, right? She wasn't out in the streets hustling like someone like maybe Davos. Davos grew up in the slums of King's Landing, right? And Arya currently was slumming it for a while. And now she's like becoming an assassin over in Bravos, right? But Dunk's one of the few characters that is written in a way that is so unique and not like other... Uh, you know, traditional A Song of Ice and Fire literary themes. And, uh, it's really important that he, like, when they're looking for a character or an actor that's going to play this character, that that actor knows that about this person. They're truly insightful. And I don't know, I really enjoyed the way that was worded. So, uh, they said any ethnicity. Now, obviously, in Dunkin' Egg books, he is a white dude. I actually had a theory because Dunk doesn't know his parentage. Uh, and he's described as having like brown hair and I think at one point uh, he has blue it's mentioned that he has like light eyes or blue eyes right but uh, I I thought it was interesting that because Dunk not only doesn't know who his parents are but he also doesn't know uh, his exact age right he hasn't kept track of all of his birthdays so he could be uh, he mentions specifically in a hedge night he said it could be 18 but it could also it could be 19 right and he could actually be a few years older than that right but he just says in the point where he's saying i'm 18 or i'm 19 he's like that just sounds good so when he's saying it to rohan weber lady rohan weber he's like this sounds like a good age to say right so i actually had a theory that dunk could be a little bit older than he actually thinks he is and he could be a bastard king Aegon the unworthy who for a show reference is the son of viserys rainier's son remember she shows him to her dad right one of that guy's sons, when he gets older, becomes king, and he becomes King Egg on the Unworthy, and he, uh, you know, leaves a bunch of bastards that he legitimizes on his deathbed, but he dies in, like, around 185 AC, right, and because of that, you know, the story, the turning to Ashford Meadow, Ashford Meadow is in 209 AC, so that's 16 plus 9 would be 25, so that's 25 years after King Aegon dies, so in my opinion, it's totally likely that he could have conceived dunk and dunk could be around 26 or 25 around the events of the story because he's close to that age when he mentions anyway and then also right the casting call says that he could be an actor up to the age of 25 but the reason why i mentioned that about the race part is because my theory of that would be uh wrong if he's any other race other than white because the targaryens on the show have been you know, canonically white then the Lorians are canonically black on the tv show but in canon uh, House Targaryen and House Valarian actually intermix a lot. So the TV show would have had to make most of Daenerys' ancestors mixed, my complexion, uh, in as opposed to white. So they're keeping uh, the mixing of houses, I'm assuming, separate, and that's not canon on the TV show. But anyway, if they do go with the white person, maybe, maybe my theory would work on the TV show. I think it could still work for the books because Dunk is around that age. So anyway, I pretty much covered everything real quick. Uh, let me know what you all think about this information down below in the comment section. I'll reiterate it for you because I kind of went on a bunch of tangents. Uh, one is they will start filming by March 2024, and that was courtesy of George. Uh, I'm sorry, courtesy of the casting post itself saying that the actor will need to be at least age 9 uh, by March 2024. Um, Ira Parker is the person who wrote the pilot and will probably write a few more episodes in uh, the first season of the Dunkin' Egg show because he... You know, George rants and raves about how well he liked the pilot script in George's Not a Blog Post. And also in that same Not a Blog Post, George told us it'll be six episodes. Uh, and also the, the dude Ira Parker does have some experience because he was on Ryan Condo's writing team for House of the Dragon. And in particular is credited with writing all of episode four. It's personally one of my favorite episodes of uh, the season. And then lastly, the working title for the show is going to be called A Night of the... Or it's called right now. It's A Night of the Seven Kingdoms, The Hedge Knight. And it probably won't be called Duncan Egg uh, for the TV show because no one really gets that reference until you, you, you've you read the books. So the average show watcher would have no idea what the Duncan Egg show is about. But if they call it something like A Night of the Seven Kingdoms, 
uh, you know, that's a big reference to Game of Thrones stuff. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Please slap a like on this video. Super special shout out to all my Patreon producers. They are the North Must Remember, Brianne Johnson, e, Destiny Mix Queen, Phillips420, Tyler Schnabel, and Pebbles83. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Have a good rest of your weekend.